Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alamin wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa alihi wa sahbihi wa tabi'ina lahum bi ihsan ila yawmiddin wa alayna ma'ahum wa fihim bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahimin nawayna at-ta'allum wa ta'lim Allah aid us in this we intend to learn and teach wa nafa wa lantifa we intend to give and take benefit. What tadkir wa mudakira? We intend to remind others and ourselves. Remember, wal ifada wal istifada. We intend to profit mutually. Wal hatha ala tamasuki bi kitab ilahi wa bi sunnati rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa sallam. Allah aid us in that. We intend encouraging adherence to Allah's book, the Sunnah of Allah's Messenger sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wa sallam. Wal dua al huda wa dilala ta al khair. We intend inviting to guidance and leading to good all of that we intend seeking the countenance of Allah which means to seek Allah alone himself subhanahu wa mardati wa qurbi wa thawabihi subhanahu wa ta'ala all of that we intend seeking Allah's nearness pleasure and reward we intend what the author intended so in this book, this is Yakut number two. This is Yakut number two today's stream. If we didn't uh, mention that, we should edit the uh, edit the subject. Yakut two. The author is Habib Muhammad bin Ahmed Ash Shatiri, with an A Ash Shatiri, and it's Alif Lam, and the T is actually a Ta Ash Shatiri. Um, we intend what he intended. And we intend what our sheikhs intend, especially those connecting us to the author and those from whom we took this work, alhamdulillah, and what the pious intend and what Allah knows of good intentions. And we ask Allah to accept this and bless this and teach us what is beneficial and benefit us through uh, what he teaches us and to increase us in right guidance and to grant us the fruit of this knowledge of fiqh which is obeying Allah's command and avoiding the things Allah has prohibited we ask Allah that by Allah's mercy and Allah is the most merciful of the merciful to proceed alhamdulillah we began this book and we ask Allah uh, that that be with his aid depending on him, and we consign that to him. نَقُولُ مُسْتَعِينِينَ بِاللَّهِ مُتَوَكِّلِينَ عَلَيْهِ مُفَوِّذِينَ الْأَمْرَ إِلَيْهِ We began Al-Yaqut and Nafis three weeks ago, and in the two in weeks between that, we had some tri trips, travel we had to do. Alhamdulillah, we visited beautiful brothers and sisters in Allentown, Pennsylvania, and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that there was benefit in that. And um, and we had one other one other responsibility to take care of, so alhamdulillah wa shukru ala thalika. And inshallah taala, um, la ilaha illallah. We're continuing. We were still just in the, in, the, in the introduction of this book, al Yakut, which essentially means precious gems, precious gems. Uh, in the madhab of Muhammad bin Idris and the author he says and we translated some of this for you inshallah uh, accompanying um, an accompanying document will uh, follow he says praise Allah for what he has prescribed of the religion of the deen and that's where we stopped Praise Allah for what he has prescribed of the deen. So we uh, commented on the basmala and some of its meanings. And that al-basmala has ahkam. Al-basmala has rules. As does al-hamdala. So al-basmala, you pronounce it al-basmala. That is the name of your saying, Bismillah. 
Alhamdulillah is the name of your saying. Alhamdulillah. Um, so what is Alhamd? What is Alhamd? Alhamd and in this context, they give it its linguistic definition because it has a, a, an urfi definition in the convention of the ulama and it has a le lexical, that's a fancy way for saying linguistic definition, lughatan. Lughatan alhamd is athana'u bil lisani ala al jameel al ikhtiyari. Praise with the tongue for something splendid that is willfully done. Praise with the tongue for something splendid that is willfully done. As opposed to something that wasn't chosen by the one who is it. Like the shine, the shine on a pearl. The shine on a pearl. If you praise a pearl, it didn't will to shine. So that's not technically hamd. It's medah. Uh, whereas hamd would be praising someone for their graciousness because they willed to act that way. Um, in the, the Urf Hamd is, this isn't, what, what, how do we understand what he's saying? He's, he's saying, Thanabi Lisan, Al Al Jamil Al Ikhtiyar. Praise with the tongue for something splendid that is willfully done. Lilla, it only belongs to Allah. Uh, Mustahik, he, he deserves it. La ilaha illallah. In the Urf Hamd is, in Urf Hamd is uh, doing something that shows magnification for a benefactor, uh, whether that uh, beneficence was shown to the one praising him or otherwise. And Hamd in Urf is shukr in Luga. Hamd in Urf is shukr in Luga. So the Urfi definition of Hamd in the convention of the ulama, the definition of Hamd is the linguistic definition of shukr. But we're talking about Hamd, so I'm not going to digress much further than that. In your Nayla Raja, all of this is listed and all of it is defined. For those that have access to Nayla Raja, there's a thorough sharh here. And uh, everyone, inshallah, should have that and should read that. Um, those who need it, especially in Arabic. Okay, so Hamd, another way they talk about Hamd. Once uh, Sayyidina Umar, he said to Sayyidina Ali, we know SubhanAllah, we know Allahu Akbar, but what is Hamd? And he said, Hamd is something that Allah chose for himself and is pleased with from his creation. Hamd is, belongs to Allah. He chose it for himself and it pleases him when his creation makes Hamd of him. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah tamna al mizan. Praise of Allah fills the scales of deeds. The best dua is Alhamd. Afdal dua alhamdulillah. Afdal dhikr la ilaha illallah. That's in hadith. The best dua is alhamdulillah. The best dhikr is la ilaha illallah. Like we have friends that study non-profit work. Some of them Harvard non-profit teaching. They really know it. So how do they ask for more? Oh, you're such a nice donor. You gave us that and it was so good. Hamd. Yeah. What is it? Hamd. Hamd is a dua. Right? Alhamdulillah shukra. And that's not bad, right? That's uh, la in shakartum la azidannakum. If you're grateful, I'll give you an increase, Allah teaches. So, Hamd. Hamd is great. Allahu Akbar. Hamd has, uh, first of all, some of the hadith. Everything that is of importance is not begun with Bismillah are deficient. The hadith with that meaning. Some of those narrations include or are specific to 
everything that's not begun with hamd, right? No, I don't think this print has it, but in any case, it's in. It's there, right? So some of those hadith specifically are for him. Yeah, there it is. No, it's not here. In any case, some of the riwayat, um, some of the riwayat associated with uh, beginning include the hamdullah, speech that is not begun with the hamdullah is deficient, and some of them just say dhikr in general. So they actually say when we combine, like when we mention those hadith, kulu amran li ba la yubda'u fi bi bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Every matter of concern that's not begun, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, is deficient, and of little baraka uh, is cut off. Some of those riwayat mention hamd. Some some of the narrations mention hamd. Some of the narrations mention dhikr. So they say, really, if you use that hadith, you're using hadith based on narration of praising a meaning, not necessarily a specific phrase, right? So. Um, Hamd would be included in that meaning, as with dhikr in general, and, and as is a salah al nabi and even some of them may be the shahadatain. Like in khutub, you should have the shahadatain as well. So um, a thorough beginning to a lesson will include the basmalah, the hamdallah, and salah and salam ala nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A thorough khutbah will not include the basmala. It will include the hamdallah, and it will include salah as salam ala nabi, and it will include the shahadatain. So why in a thorough khutbah do we not begin bismillahir rahmanir rahim? This is a point we should add to last week's lesson. The conditions for beginning with the basmala are three. The conditions for it to be recommended, excuse me, to begin with Basmala are three. So understood from that, you could say conversely, is that it's not always recommended, and it's not. And we know that, right? It's not recommended if it's Makru, it's Makru. It's not recommended if it's Muharram, Lidati, it's Muharram. Uh, there's other cases where it's not recommended. So the conditions for it to be recommended to begin with Basmala are three, one, and yakuna amran dabal. That it is a matter the Sharia concerns itself with. It is not forbidden for itself, nor offensive for itself, nor of the base things. Base things, you don't begin with the Basmala. Two, and la yakuna dhikran mahba that it not just be purely dhikr. So unless you're doing the basmala as dhikr, you don't begin your dhikr with the basmala. Unless you're doing your basmala as dhikr, like if you're getting ready to say, la ilaha illallah 100 times. Do you say bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim? La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah. No, you just go right into la ilaha illallah. Dhikr doesn't, it doesn't demand the basmala and it doesn't require tahara. And it doesn't have an intention. Just dhikr. Dhikr of Allah. There's nothing wrong with saying basmala, but that's what, what's being discussed is, did the Sharia recommend you to do it at that point? And the answer is no. Right? In, in, the, in the jihad of the Shafi'is. Are you rewarded for saying bismillah? Yes, because it's dhikr. No problem. Are you rewarding to connecting it in that place? No. There's no reason to connect it to that. Three. That the shara, the lawgiver, did not assign another beginning to that thing. This is what relates to khutbah. That the sharia does not assign another beginning to that. The shara, and it's not the sharia, excuse me, the shara, the lawgiver. Who is the lawgiver? Allah and his messenger. 
How did the lawgiver begin his khutbah? If we say he's the messenger, he began alhamdulillah. So if you look at the formulas of khutbat haja of a Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, for example, the one we use in Muslim, alhamdulillah nahmaduhu. That's how he began. So that's, uh, that is the beginning for uh, a khutbah. As opposed to where the Sharia did prescribe for us the beginning with uh, al-basmala, or it's of concern and we don't know a prescription, then it's recommended to begin with basmala. Uh, if we know of a prescription, you go to that prescription. How did the Sharia start that? Or how did the Sharia, which is a Habib, وسلم, start that? Alhamdulillah, that is from Tuhfa. We took that from Shaykh ibn Hajr. It's in my notes, Shaykh ibn Hajr al Haytami mentioned that in a Tuhfa. All right, so then Hamd. So Hamd also has Ahkam. So there are rulings of Al Basmala, there are rulings of Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah has four rulings Wajib in Salah and in Khutbah of Jumu'ah. Hamd is a rukin, right? Hamd is a rukin when you say Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. It's part of a rukin. And in khutbah Jum'ah, Hamd is a rukin in both khutbahs. You got to say Hamd in both of the khutbatains with that phrase. It has to be Hamd, Ahmad, and so on. One of the, one of the derivatives of Hamd. It's Mandub. In every state and in the, uh, and in proposing a, to a mar no actually uh, yeah in a marital proposal. In every state, hamd is praiseworthy and in a marital proposal. Notice hamd only has four ahkam. Why? Because the asl of it is mandu. Something if it's base ruling, its default is mandu. It will never be mubah. So the default of hamd is nadab. So there is no fifth. There's no mubah here. Uh, it's either one. Of, it's one of the other four, right? So the base is hamd. Hamdulillah. Hamdulillah ala kulli hal. Mandu, right? And also in the khutbah of nikah, mandu. And the khutbah of nikah. And this might be misvowed, right? So if you're going to do a, a khutbah before. In Akad, it's mandub to say hamd in that khutbah. The khutbah itself is mandub. You don't have to do it. People say, oh, will you come marry my daughter? To marry, do a marriage for my daughter. Really, what he's doing is making sure that the, the wali does it right. Because they don't need him. The wali could sit there with the zoj in the presence of two witnesses. They could do a marriage. Right, the akad doesn't require someone to deliver a sermon or to tell him how to do it, but many people will make mistakes if they don't have that person officiate. So it's good to have that, but it doesn't need it. And he, that person also can serve as a witness. He might be appointed by the magistrate. Allahu Akbar. It's makru to do hamd. Where? Uh, in. Uh, uh, in uh, a a mezbala, which can be translated as a rubbish heap, but Allah knows best. Part of the connotation of this is where, like, if you cleaned out animal dung, the pile where you pile that, like places where they keep livestock, the the, the when they sweep out the cages and stuff, and their their food and their dung and everything. Mezbala would apply that as well, not just regular garbage, but that type of garbage. It's makru to do hamd there. And also in a slaughtering place, it's makru to do hamd. Uh, and we have to do tahqiq of whether it's praiseworthy for us to do hamd when we slaughter for Eid al-Adha in other than that place. Before the Eid, we could do tahqiq of those duas. What duas do we say when we slaughter for Eid? And if we're slaughtering over and over again in the same place, do we say ham there or not? That would be a good research if someone wants to do that. Um, haram. When is it haram to say hamd? 
if someone sinned and they're happy about it, so they say hamd. Mushkila. Right? So if someone falls into sin and they are happy about sinning and they say alhamdulillah uh, because of that. Muharram. And that feeling of happiness with disobeying Allah is very dangerous for our heart. We should be saddened by our disobedience, never gladdened by it, never rejoice it. So like if we tell stories about how great we are in Jahiliyyah, um, if the intention is veneration of ignorance, that's negative. Sometimes the, inten the intention is showing how absurd we behaved, right? Umar anhu would do that. He would laugh at the fact that he used to make an idol out of dates, or they would. And when they get hungry, they would eat their idol. That's silly, right? He would laugh at that. That's fine, right? Laughing at absurdity and disobedience. Uh, and maybe, you know, he explained it to people who never saw that age and there was benefit for them in that explanation of how absurd polytheism is, right? Um, that's okay. But praising Allah for disobedience that you're happy about is forbidden. And we seek refuge in Allah from that. So he said, we praise Allah. For what he has, shara'a. We praise Allah. For what he has prescribed of deen, which we defined last week. What is deen? Deen is at ta'atu wal ibadatu wal jaza'u. So you could translate it as religion. It's translated as religion. And I know there's some discussion about whether that's a good translation or not. Um. Um, Allahu Akbar And uh, So that translates as That translates as uh, For what he has prescribed Of deen Deen is to obedience Ibadah to worship You could translate that as devotion to adore is also a translate of ibadah, adoration. And that must be an old usage. They understood it that, that and at some point in the way they use language. And uh, an al jaza can be translated as recompense or reward or requital. It has all of those implications. The result of what, what one has done, earned. So that's deen. al ta'atu wal ibadatu wal jaza. And uh, la ilaha illallah, so yom ad maliki yom ad is the yom al jaza in that case. So that's why we translate that master of the day of judgment, the day of requital or recompense for our deeds. And then ad din ad din is a synonym for al Islam in the Sharia definitions. Of it, of them, a deen is a Sharia is a is a synonym for al Islam. So, what is the deen? The deen is al Islam. And what is the definition of al Islam or a deen? In that, I was giving you a linguistic definition of deen. What is the Sharia definition of deen? Ma sharaahu Allahu ala lisani nabihi min al ahkam, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. مَا شَرَعَهُ اللَّهُ عَلَى لِسَانِ نَبِيهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَعَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ مِنَ الْأَحْكَامِ That is the deen. What Allah prescribed 
with the tongue or on the tongue of his Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam of laws. Or you could say rulings in this case because probably in Tawheed you wouldn't really call them laws, call them tenets or ahkat hukum, right? So that's deen. What, what Prophet Muhammad said is deen. That's it. So if that's how we understand deen, Allahu Akbar, deen is just so beautiful. Everything Prophet Muhammad said, prescribed, khalas, that's the deen. Alhamdulillah. So we got to praise Allah for that. He said, we praise Allah for what he's prescribed of deen. How could we not? And it was prescribed on the tongue of the most praiseworthy, Muhammad Sallallahu Allahumma salli wa sallam wa baraka alayhi wa 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 And what he gave of guidance to the clear path, right? Uh, guided us to the straight and clear path, right? What, what he has, capital he, he has guided to and there isn't an us there. He has guided to of the straight and clear path. As Sirat al Mustabeen. Allahu Akbar. And he is a Sirat. Al Habib Sallallahu is a Sirat. Allah said, Wa anna hadha sirati mustaqiman fattabi'uhu. And this one is our path straight, so follow him. You could translate that verse that way. He is a sirat. Allahu Akbar. And they say that he left us ala mahajja bayda. He left us on a bright, clear path. It's night like it's day. No one will deviate it from it except someone who is doomed. Alhamdulillah. That's what he did for us. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. So we praise Allah for that. He's guided us to that straight and clear path. Was salatu was salamu ala Rasul al Amin. Beautiful. Allahu Akbar. As salah. As salatu min Allah rahmatan makrunatan rahmatun makrunatan bit ta'zim. Salah from Allah is mercy combined with. Veneration, magnification. That's from its meanings. Rahmatan makrunatan bit ta'zim. From the angels is istighfar. The angels sin salawat. Yastagfirun. From other than them, at tadarru wa dua, pleading and supplicating. Alhamdulillah. Right? Wa salah wa salam ala rasulillah. So we got to send a lot of salawat upon Prophet Muhammad. Prophet Muhammad's salawat are obligatory. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Inna laha wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabiyya ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu. Sallu is an order. Sallu, Allah ordered us. An order indicates obligation. So when is it obligatory? Every majlis, once in your life, every time he's mentioned, aqwal, those are positions. The position of the author, or yeah, the author and his school, as Shafi'i is it's, it's obligatory in salah. Every salah, it's a rukin to send salawat on al-Habib, and the hadith, 
the stingy one is the one before whom I mentioned, and he doesn't send salawat upon me. That would indicate that it's obligatory whenever he's mentioned. Though, again, the position of the school is what was stated. Um, was salamu. Salam is lugatan safety. Al aman or security. Was sharan al aman min jamil afat. Yeah, uh, harm, safety from all harm. Salam, safety from all harm. So he says, was salatu, was salamu. Salawat and salams, ala rasul. What is ar rasul? Ar rasul is insan. Hur Dakar Uhiya Ilehi bi Sharin wa Umira bi Tablighi. A simple definition of a Rasul is a free male human who had a law revealed to him and was ordered to transmit it. And Nabi has all of those components except the order of transmission insan a prophet is a free male human who received the revelation of Allah and was not ordered to convey it to others if he's ordered to convey he's a prophet and a messenger every messenger is also a prophet not every prophet is a messenger and Banu Israel might have 70 prophets killed in one day who were ordering uh, adherence to what Sharia? The Sharia of Musa, alayhi salam. That's what I understand of the question, right? After, between the Sharia of Musa and the Sharia of Isa, Isa's Sharia is Nasikha of the Mus Sharia of Musa. Prior to that, it wasn't Mansukha, right? Uh, so what did the prophets do? They uh, they revived and ordered adherence to the Sharia of Musa alayhi salam. And you see also the saying, and there's issues with its uh, senate and attribution to the prophet. The prophets of my community, excuse me, the learned of my community are like the prophets of Benu Israel, right? They don't convey a shara. They, uh, they order adherence to the Sharia of Muhammad alayhi salam. So that is Ar Rasul. Uh, Allah says, Wa ma arsalna min kablika illa rijalan uhiya ilayhim. That's the cause of that uh, condition. Allah said, We've not sent before you except rijal. Yeah, for example, in Surah Yusuf, and there's other surahs too. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِكَ إِلَّا رِجَالًا نُوحِي إِلَيْهِمْ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْقُرَىٰ And also in Surah Al-Anbiya, verse 7. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا قَبْلَكَ إِلَّا رِجَالًا نُوحِي إِلَيْهِمْ فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Ask the people of remembrance if you know not. Um, there are those that say Maryam was a prophet and the mother of Musa. There are those from Islamic scholars that say that. Um, and the word that is used for what the mother of Musa received is wahi. Um, so it's not entirely far-fetched. Um, uh, and Allah knows best. Al Rasul, Al Amin, and we all know he's trustworthy. Obviously, that is uh, Amana is one of the obligatory attributes of prophets and messengers. It is also a, a laqab that he was given. So, for example, when he 25 years old, when Sayyidina, no, 35, excuse me, 35, 
35 years old, when Sayyidatina Fatima was born and the Kaaba was being rebuilt, they disputed who gets to put the black stone in its proper place. It almost came to, uh, to a fight. They said the first person who comes through that door uh, will make him a judge among us. Prophet Muhammad came and they say, Hada Muhammad Hada al Amin. We're pleased with him as a judge. So he told them, you know, take the major families, each of them hold a portion of a mantle, place the black stone in it, and they lift it up together. And he saw, he saw them put it in its place. Um, Sayyidina Muhammad, what is Sayyid? Sayyid has various meanings. Mensada fi komihi, and you could hear it's the, that's the similar root, right? Sada. He was imminent among his people. Men kathura sawaduhu, same root. He has a large, uh, sawad is like blackness, but here it means people with him. He had a large army. Al Halim al la yastafizuhu ghadab. Someone who is clement and not overwhelmed by anger, not incited by anger. The last one, man tafsa'u ilayhi nas in the shada'id, the one to whom people flee in uh, in difficulties, in a panic. The one to whom people flee, like when they're scared, in hardships, and all of those meanings are combined in uh, Rasulullah. So he's Sayyid in, in the full meaning of the word. He is Sayyid uh, by his own statement in the Sahih of Muslim. And a Sayyidu, and a Sayyidu Walidi Adam, Yom al Qiyamah. I am the Sayyid of all of the children of Adam on the day of resurrection. Allahu Akbar. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And in some narrations he said, and I'm not boasting, that's not boasting for me to say that. Muhammad is the proper name of our Prophet, who is Muhammad bin Abdullah bin Amr Muttalib bin Hashim to the end of his lineage. So he is Hashimi, he is Qurashi, and uh, a, a seeker of knowledge. Uh, our kids that learn Sirah should learn his lineage up to Adnan and that of his mothers. To, uh, until uh, Kilab or Hakim, where it connects to his, his fathers. Uh, his mother is Amina bint Wahab bin Abdi Manaf bin Zuhra bin Kilab or Hakim. So his mother's Abdullah and his father, his father's Abdullah bin Abdul Muttalib and his mother's Amina bint Wahab. He was born in the year of the elephant and died at the age of 63. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam received revelation at the age of 40. Remained in Mecca for 13 years after that. Made Hijra to Al Madina where he remained for 10. Died and is buried in Al Madina. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Qurashi. It's personally obligatory to know that about him. Can't deny it. Can't deny his Qurashi. It's Hashimi. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He's Khairu Khalqillah. His name is Muhammad, more known by Muhammad in the earth and Ahmed in the sky. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Sayyidina Muhammad wa alihi. Who are the al? And we translated that as trusted messenger. Oh, cool. We said our liege lord, which can be one word, Muhammad. Why liege lord? A liege lord is a lord that also has a lord over them. And uh, if you say master, the aunties from the first resurrection and second will get on your case. So don't translate master in Detroit. My aunties ordered me that. And you had to listen to your elders. Allahu Akbar. Allah is the master of the day of judgment. 
subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you notice in khutbah, I say Sayyidina Muhammad. Because the aunties told me, Allah is the master. What are you just kid up here talking about? <laughs> it's hard to translate Sayyid. You know, Sayyid, and there's various implications that maybe in this environment especially have a negative connotation to the word master. So alhamdulillah for that. Our liege Lord Muhammad. I got that from Sheikh Nu's translation, but I understand it's a Lord that uh, has a Lord over them. And his folk, let's say his folk, Sayyidina Muhammad, his folk, comma, pure companions. All of them. Ejmain. All right. And I author this book for the blessing. That's implied, but we're going to omit it. All right. So his uh, folk, who are his folk? Depending on the context. As Shafi'i calls them, the believers of Abdul of Banu Muttalib and Banu Hashim. And Imam, uh, so a Shafi'i, who does he say the Al are? The believers of Banu Muttalib and Banu Hashim. And uh, Imam an Nawawi later says that is in the context of zakat. In the context of praise, it is itratihi, so the descendants of uh, Al Hassan and Al Hussein. So the Prophet through Prophet's descendants from Al Hassan and Al Hussein. The itra. So if you say alihi at tayyibin at tahirin, washabihi. In that context, the al, it's as though you're praising his itra. Um, in the context of dua, it's all believers. So they can also, you could expand the al to depend on the context, but if you're just going to give a simple Shafi'i answer, it's going to be believers of Banu Hashim and Banu Muttalib. They are the Al, meaning they can't receive Zakat. The Al of Muhammad does not receive Zakat. Who's the Al? The believers of Banu Hashim and Banu Muttalib. Uh, Sayyidina Muhammad wa Alihi, Alihi at Tahirin. So here though, maybe we mean because he said at Tahirin, maybe we mean his itra. Wa sahbihi. Sahbihi. Okay, beautiful. Sahab. I've been looking for this definition. In Arabic, you have words that are like a word that has no singular and its implication is plural. Sahab is one of those. So sahb is not the plural of sahib. The plural of sahib is ashab. Sahab is ismu jam'in. Li sahib, right? So it's an ism that is a plural of sahib. So you could say, you can kind of say it's plural, but it's kind of not a plural. It's like a singular that has a plural implication or just a word that always is only used with a plural implication, right? Ismu jam'in li sahib bi ma'ana sahabi. So the meaning of sahib is sahabi, a prophetic companion. Sahab means a group of them, right? But it's not the, it's not like ashab. And yeah, I might be little a little e a little uh, unprecise there, but Allah knows best. All right. So what is a sahabi? A sahabi, a prophetic companion. So if you have one companion, they'll say a sahabi al Jalil, uh, Abdurrahman bin Auf. What is a sahabi? A sahabi is manaj tama mu'minan bi nabina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa mata ala imanihi. 
a sahabi is someone who met our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as a believer and died in a state of faith. That is a sahabi. Man ijtama'a mu'minan bi nabina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa mata ala imanihi. Someone who met our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu as a believer and died in faith is a prophetic companion. There are implications to that with Sunni Muslims. We believe they are all upright, so we'll take hadith from them all. Kulluhum udul. Dying on faith excludes someone who, uh, who apostated and died in apostate. Even if they appeared to be a Sahabi during the life of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa La ilaha illallah. So that is a Sahabi. They are are all udul. They are all upright for transmission. We take hadith from all of them. They put a condition that it would be during his earthly life, and in the earth, on the on the on the earth, not in the sky. So that exclude that includes Isa alayhi salam. That includes Isa alayhi salam because he met him at Beit Maqdis al al-Asah. So al-Asah al and Isa, Nabi, Rasul, Sahabi. Isa alayhi salam is a prophet, a messenger, and a prophetic companion. Because he hasn't died an earthly death yet. And he met al-Habib sallallahu alayhi salam at Jerusalem. On Laylat al Isra wal Mi'raj. So he's a Sahabi, radiallahu anhu, wa alayhi salam. And he's a Nabi. And he's a Rasul in Ulul Azam. Allahu Akbar. Ala al Asah. And then he says, Wa sahbihi ajma'een. So we uh, said all of them. Why all of them? Because there are those that uh, they don't praise all of the Sahaba. Masakin, and that's an innovation. It's a terrible innovation. Uh, it's a terrible innovation. And uh, some of those who aren't praised, their suhba is explicitly stated in the Quran, like Sayyidina Abu Bakr. Where Allah says about the cave, إِذْ يَقُولُ إِذْ قَالَ لِسَاحِبِهِ Or is it إِذْ يَقُولُ إِذْ يَقُولُ إِذْ يَقُولُ لِسَاحِبِهِ لَا تَحْسَنْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ مَعْنَا When he says to his, his, his companion, Grieve not, Allah is with us. So that's, that's a nas of the suhbah of Sayyidina Abu Bakr رضي الله عنه. Um, Allahu Akbar. So then we're going to go through this next section relatively quickly because he, he's describing um, his, uh, he has, uh, um, he is describing um, his intentions in this. And he says, Amma Bad. Amma Ba'd is a, a, a rhetorical technique in Arabic and it is a word that is used to go from one type of speech to another. So he's just done a, 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 a muqaddima or a khutbah consisting of basmalah, hamdallah, wa salah, wa salam ala rasulullah. Now he's going to talk uh, a different type of uh, discussion. So going between those two discussions, it's it's rhetorically effective, eloquent in Arabic to say, "Amma bad." Uh, in your khutbah, you should do it. Uh, it is said that it is faslul khitab that Dawood alayhi salam was given. He said uh, to proceed. You could translate it as. I was uh, indicated or I was directed by someone who um, I have no recourse to oppose 
or I was directed by someone who it's not, uh, I'm not, I wouldn't be allowed to oppose. Um, and uh, all I could do is conform to his instructions to write a treatise in the madhab of Al Imam al Shafi'i. And who instructed him to do this? His Shaykh Al Alama Abdullah bin Umar al Shatiri. Rahimahullah. Abdullah bin Umar al Shatiri, when he was in Mecca seeking knowledge, he would pray in the court of the Kaaba that his knowledge reached the horizons. And he didn't know how that would happen. And uh, then he became the Shaykh of the Rabat of Tareem. And the students went to the horizons. And alhamdulillah, his knowledge reaches us here in Detroit through uh, his senate, right, to this student of his. Allahu Akbar. Um, so he wrote a risala in the madhab of the Imam al Shafi'i. Who is a Shafi'i? Al Shafi'i is Muhammad bin Idris bin Abbas bin Uthman bin Shafi' bin As Sa'ib bin Ubaid bin Abd Yazid bin Hashim bin Muttalib bin Abdi Manaf. So uh, Al Shafi'i is Hashimi, and his uh, ascription is to Shafi' bin As Sa'ib, who is a Sahabi, the son of a Sahabi. So both Shafi' and As Sa'ib are prophetic companions. And a Shafi'i's name is Muhammad bin Idris. And uh, a Shafi'i was born in 150 after the Hijrah of Al-Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and died in 204, 54 years old, 54 lunar years old. And we might go into his biography more. There's a nice biographical section you could read on him in the Reliance of the Traveler and the biographies. That's a really nice section of that book in the appendices. Um, no. He is regarded as the revival reviver of the second hundred years. Imam Ahmad regards him as being referred to by the hadith of Alim Quraysh, the scholar of Quraysh. Um, and alhamdulillah, and inshallah we'll talk about him more. He said, uh, this work would include definitions. No, I would say would combine the definitions. That's one of the benefits of this book. Every chapter has a definition of that chapter, of that, that work. What is salah? What is wudu? What is tayammum? What is izalat al najasa? What is najasa? What is buying? What is renting? What is lending? What is marriage? What is divorce? What is a mahar? All of the chapters he defines. So uh, this would give us an overview of the various chapters of a book of, of, of a complete book of law. Whereas a student would have to dig for those otherwise. Where? In commentaries. And you might find three of them for a given chapter. He brought it all here, combined it all in a little simple, easy to follow uh, uh, format. Really easy, simple, accessible format. That's one of the benefits. So a seeker of knowledge, it would behoove him or her if they're studying in Arabic, to memorize these definitions from al Yaquds and Nafis. Some, with some exceptions. They might find they, a, a given chapter, they like another definition better. They might memorize that instead. Hawi alil arkan wa shurut. That includes the obligatory integrals of each uh, chapter, as well as the conditions, the preconditions. Right? It includes the obligatory integrals. And it's better not to say preconditions. Just conditions is better. Um, that also uh, lists the various types of scenarios. It lists the types of scenarios. So like in, uh, 
in some chapters it's really hard to conceptualize what's happening so he'll say an example of a contract is for Zaid to say to Amr I'll buy this from you for this much and Amr will say accept he'll give you the surah of how uh, that transaction would take place so it's uh, he simplified what could be very complex for someone and when, like in the when you study the very elementary books, oh, it just seems so small and clear. When you study the big books, as the breadth and the depth widens, it becomes like ocean-like. And it's hard to kind of wrap your head around all of it. The way he did it helps you wrap your head around it. So in our curriculum, they read this before they read Reliance and definitely before they read Minhaj. Because when you get over there, you're going to just be like, your head's going to be just... Your bandwidth is going to be like, wow, man, how do I wrap my head around this? But if you see, okay, this is what it is. These are its integrals. These are its conditions. This how you do it. That brings it a lot closer. And then all of those other cases, you can kind of file those into that format and be kind of see them for what they are as additional cases of these questions. So it's really a blessing the way he did this. Uh, Rahimahullah. Um, again, and... There's a baraka in the instruction of your sheikh. So his sheikh, ashara, right? Which really means ordered. Told him to do it and he did it. Rahimahullah. Um, so he's describing uh, his intentions. Allahu Akbar. His objectives. So we didn't need the board to tell us how to uh, get a vision and a mission. Right. And why don't you do it like the corporations I know? Yani, who are you and what's your corporation? <laughs> but we'll be nice, inshallah. We don't even believe this whole thing is a corporation. This country is a corporation. That should tell you what the corporate mentality does. Yeah, miss me with that. Where we want the Muhammadan way. So he said, Khidmatan li sigar al muta'allimin. I did this as a service to young students like us. Sigar, we're sigar. The kibar khalas, they're folk. They're in muhadhab. They're beyond minhaj. Like, uh, what is his name? A, a saqaf set. Someone who doesn't read Muhadhab, he doesn't know the Qawaiid of the Madhab. What do they say about uh, another book of the author of Muhadhab, Abi Ishaq al-Shirazi, who is Kibar al-Awliya. They really like his books in Tareem too. Wulid Abi Tareem, wa hafid al-Qur'an al-Azim, wa ta'addaba ma'abi, wa qara'a al-Tanbi. was born in Tareem, memorized the great Qur'an, had adab with his father, and read Tanbi. 10B, again, that's been up beyond Minhaj, they read that. But later, Himma got less and stuff, so they made things easier. Minhaj is making things easier. So this is for Sigar. I know cab drivers that read this. The cab driver I used to use told me, get this print, Abdul Karim, because uh, when we were reading it in the Rabat, Habib Salam Shatari told us this was a good print. Yeah. Then you come and read a book or something, and... MashaAllah, we're the king of the Muslim show. Among the, the one-eyed, among the blind, the one man is a scholar instead of a seeker. Sigar al mutalimin Not even the kibar of Tolab. We're the sigar of Tolab. Sigar al mutalimin But alhamdulillah, learning is a good thing. So we're, that is a great honor to be a little student. A little student who reads all of the chapters of the Sharia. That's what little students do. Learn the basics of every chapter of Sharia. Because how would you how would you worship otherwise? Like definitely by Abud's age, if we had decent curriculum, someone would have read this. If not like Talha or between Talha and Abud. Right? Imam Haddad started memorizing a book that's way above this when he was 15 after finishing Quran started memorizing Irshad. 
There is a time, the last Mufti of Tarim, Sheikh uh, Fadl, he memorized Irshad. It's rare that anyone did that at that time. There was a time where the girls of, of Shibam memorized Irshad, when the Dawah was really strong and the teaching was really strong. There was a time in Tarim where kids would read Minhaj with the women of Tarim before being sent to the Shiuch to really study deep. No. And we ask Allah to return what was lost. I mean. So, uh, as a service to, le to young students, to small students, uh, learners, and an ease for the difficulties of teachers. Made it easy on teachers. Here's all of these things, guys. Memorize those. He really did a good service. Jazakallah khairan. Uh, he, and he said, so I rushed, I rushed despite my shortcomings, I rushed despite my manifest faultiness to respond to his order. Yeah. So he says, فَسَارَتُ عَلَىٰ قُسُورِ الْبَيِّنْ إِلَىٰ تَلْبِيَتِهِ I rushed despite my clear, my clearly falling short, you might translate that. I rushed despite my clearly falling short or my clear shortcomings to answer his order. Allahu Akbar. If only we rushed to all the orders we were given, you'd have huge fatua. Allahu Akbar. He rushed to fulfill the order. Um, and he said, uh, and I combined what I was able to combine in these small pages. These little pages, I combined what I was able to combine. He said, What I combine what I was able to in these little pages. Shufil Adab, he didn't say, Oh, look at this big book I wrote. He said these little pages. Waraqa is humble from El uh, I want to say El Juwaini. But I might be mistaken on the author. Little book in Usul, he called it Al Waraqat, pages. He said the diminutive, these little pages, right? Like Abd is a servant, Ubaid is a little servant. So some of them, if his name was Abdullah, out of humility, he called himself Ubaidullah, the little servant of Allah. Diminutive. So he said these Wuraiqat. Allahu Akbar. And Allah, Prophet Muhammad taught us, whoever humbles himself for Allah, Allah will raise him. Man tawadha ala rafa'ahu Allah. And he said, uh, I combine what I was able to combine in these little pages, or you might say these few pages that I have named, al yakut and Nafis, precious gems or precious rubies. In the Madhab of Ibn Idris, which rhymes with a Shafi'i. Oh, cool. Uh, and I hope from those uh, that those who read it uh, are satisfied and they overlook what is not a clear error. Um, and I hope from the master, this is referring to Allah, al Mola subhanahu al ithaba wal kabul. And I hope from the master, glorious is he, that he will reward this and accept it. Allahu Akbar. And that is most of his introduction. We want to come back over some discussion of the author his biography, and actually, we have a little time. Let's do that real quick. Al-Ma'mul min al-Muttali'een al-Ridha wal-Ighda'u amma laysa muta'iyyan al-Khata' 
ومن المولى سبحانه الإتابة والقبول Okay, Allahu Akbar. So we want to go through a little of the biography of the author, and we might come back to a longer biography of a Shafi'i that is warranted. And we studied in Maqasid Halakat at Ta'lim, sacred learning, aims and objectives, that stories are an important teaching technique. So we need to go into more uh, biographies and stories. It's really beneficial for people. They say, Hikayat as Salihin. The stories of the pious are the armies that Allah sends to the hearts, right, to help the heart. And they also say it, with their mention, mercy descends, right? When the pious are mentioned, mercy descends. Um, and so what about, uh, you know, the stories of the pious, the awliya, the sahaba, um, and the habib, them, the origin of all of them. So he is the author who named this book, Al Yakut and Nafis. He is a Sayyid Muhammad bin Ahmad bin Umar al Shatiri. Uh, and actually, we're going to mention his lineage. He is a Sayyid, which in the, uh, this vocabulary, that they'll mean um, that, that he's a descendant of Prophet Muhammad through Al Hassan or Hussein. Some places will call them Sharif. Right, but in Hadramaut they'll say Sayyid or Sharif, both applying to the descendants of Al Hassan and Al Hussein. If they say Al Habib, it's like someone of of, of station uh, from that lineage or an old person. Um, a Sayyid Al Alama, the erudite scholar, Ahmad bin Umar bin Iwad bin Umar bin Ahmad bin Umar bin Ahmad bin Ali bin Hussein bin Muhammad bin Ahmad. Bin Umar bin Alawi al Shatiri, bin al Faqi, Ali ibn al Qadi Ahmad, ibn Muhammad, Asadullah bin Hassan, at Turabi bin Ali bin al Faqi al Muqaddam, who is Muhammad bin Ali Balawi. So that is his lineage to al Faqi al Muqaddam. Uh, and And a Fakiya Muqaddam is Muhammad bin Ali bin Muhammad Sahib Mirbat bin Ali Khalat Qasam. Ali Khalat Qasam is the first of the Sadat in Tadim. Bin Alawi bin Muhammad, the Sahib of Asoma, is buried outside of Tadim. Bin Alawi Sahib Sumal bin Ubaidullah bin Al Imam Muhajir. Uh, so this Alawi. Bin Ubaidillah, all of the Sada Abu Ali, we go back to him. He's the grandson of Al Muhajir. Uh, bin Ubaidillah, bin Muhajir, bin Ahmad, bin Isa, bin Muhammad, bin Ali al Uraidi, bin Jafar al Sadiq, bin Muhammad al Bakir, bin Ali Zain al Abidin, uh, bin Hussein al Sibt, uh, the, the, the maternal grandson of Allah's Messenger, bin Ali, bin Abi Talib, and uh, Hussein is also the son of Fatima Zahra. Bin to Rasulullah so uh, Muhammad bin Abdullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that that was his ibn, and uh, essentially said his lineage was from them, from Al Hassan and Al Hussein. So he is, uh, he is, um, he is. Uh, they nis they go up to a Shatiri, right? Who is Omar bin Alawi a Shatiri, one of the branches of Asad al Balawi. He's Alawi, which goes back to the grandson of Al-Muhajir. He is Tirimi, and Tirim is where they lived uh, since uh, Ali Khalid Qasam, about 800 years ago. Um, and Tirim is a city of knowledge uh, where eventually the Sada al-Balawi uh, made their base since the time of Ali Khalid al-Qasam, who built the Qibla wall of Masjid Ba'alawi. He built Masjid Ba'alawi. 
The Qibla wall is from his time. It was rebuilt during the time of Omar Mehda. And it was a, a city of deep knowledge, Tadim. So they say someone who walks the street, walked the streets of Tadim would become a faqih. There was a time the whole front row of the Jamit Mosque were muftis. Yeah. Allahu Akbar. Um, and this Sayyid was born in Tadim in 1312 after the Hijrah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Uh, and his mother's name is Zahra bint uh, the Alama of Hadramaut and its poet as Sayyid Abi Bakr bin Abdul Rahman bin Shiab ad -Din. And that's common in their families. Right? The, the mother and the father will be from very scholarly lineage. It's very, very common. Right? So his grandfather, Khalas, was the erudite scholar of Hadramaut. Sayyid Ahmad bin Abdul Rahman bin Shihab al Deen. Uh, and there he learned, uh, there he was born, there he learned. Um, he's the author of Naila Raja. Um, as we learned from his students were, uh, one from his teachers was, uh, um, Abdullah bin Omar al-Shatiri, who was the head of the Rabat of his time, and they might attribute the founding of it to him. Um, and that's enough. That's a little bit about him. And we're going to stop there. Uh, his work, Naila Raja, is extremely beneficial. It's this commentary of Safina to Najat. It's extreme. Probably, that's probably the baraka. There's a lot of baraka in that one. I'm not, I'm not detracting from Ali Yakut, but you really can't do without Nayla Raja if you're going to learn Ibad that well in, in our system. Um, and Rahimahullah, Allah have mercy on him, and it's time for Asr. So may Allah give us to uh, have a strong connection to um, this chain and its many benefits. And uh, may Allah... Give us to serve it well and uh, encompass our intentions in the intentions of the chain and our works in its works. May Allah not deprive us of the good that is with him due to the wickedness that is in us. And we ask Allah to give us uh, to be honest, sincere, accept our works, give us good teaching, call in a guidance that Allah be pleased with us. Please the heart of Prophet Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam And that the reward of the Fatiha that we recite Go to our parents, teachers, sheikhs Anyone we owe rights And the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam Al-Fatiha Allahu Akbar <laughs>